Hello, Ryan here, and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all of the news from the week just past. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and let's get on with it. This week, we take a look at more 323 features like the lens and visor, shopping UI and loot screens, plus creatures are now in the Evocati's hands for the first time with the latest Alpha 323 patch. So there has been a new Evocati patch since my last video. This one was aiming to fix a crash that was happening. Uh, I assume it's been fixed now that the patch has released, but it also brought with it some very interesting new additions. Firstly, it includes this new water simulation tech, which is a complete rework of the wave simulation and rendering of all water volumes in the game, from oceans to puddles, with water volumes now being affected by all physical objects, as well as forces like thrust and ship weight. Caustics were also fully reworked to be both faster and driven by the dynamic results of the new simulation. Underwater fog has been reworked as well to resolve various rendering issues, and the appearance of water when intersecting with the camera has been vastly improved. Plus, they have updated the water interactions to react to explosions. So quite the change there with water, and this new tech really makes water look so phenomenal, and it'll be very interesting to see what kind of gameplay comes from water in the future, as we know they want ships and shipwrecks to be buoyant and found out in the oceans, and obviously with persistence, we will be finding players' ships floating in the oceans, but also missions taking you there to explore wrecks. So there can be plenty of missions for the future, all taking place on vast bodies of water. Now, for AI, there were two new additions to Alpha 323 for AI, which are both creatures, and they are the creatures that we saw teased by Cloud Imperium. The first one being called the Copian, which, yes, that is his name, and I think it is a bit of a nod, uh, but it is a four-legged hound-like creature that resides in savannas, snow, desert, and cave biomes. Now, it says that it is not hostile when it's alone, but it will retreat to find the nearest Copium if there is one. And although they are afraid of humanoids when they are alone, the Copian tend to roam in packs, which will cause the pack to become hostile to creatures that they encounter, and they will use sharp claws and teeth to do multiple melee attacks like biting and pouncing at their target. Whew! Now this one sounds really interesting. So seeing them around places like, I assume, just Hurston and Microtech will be pretty insane. They're not just found in caves, which I thought they were to start with. They are found in many different biomes, and I think their skin color will represent where they are found. Now, it says potentially they're not always deadly, but if you do see one, I think it's probably going to be best to just get moving. You don't want to be wandering around at night alone, and I do wonder how this is going to impact my off-grid gameplay, as it does say in the in-game description for Astor's Clearing, which is pretty much where I live, that it isn't safe to go into the woods at night. So, we'll have to see how that goes. With that said, if you haven't checked out my off-grid sort of nomad gameplay series, I will post the playlist link below. It is certainly a great way to play Star Citizen that offers a whole new way of looking at what you can get up to. Anyway, the other creature that is coming for 323 is called the Maroc, which is a bird-like creature with a long beak and bat-like wings, which can be seen in flocks. And it says that they are not hostile to humanoids and the flocks will disperse when approached. Marocs are native again to savannas, snow, desert, and cave biomes, and come in multiple colors to suit their environment. So pretty exciting to see the first two creatures making their way into the verse. There will be many more to come. They want them all, but this should add a bit more life and danger to the woods, and I can't wait to see how they progress. I also believe it has been said that there are missions for hunting them and harvesting resources from them too, so they're not just gonna look scary, they're actually going to have some gameplay associated. Now, other updates for the patch include a Mobiglass UI polish pass, more pedestals for when you're buying vehicles, which is a good one, uh, and the new EVA grenade throw animations. Plus, it says they have added the currently used graphics renderer to display info. Hopefully, that is a sign of there being an option to use the current renderer or Vulcan. So, they are continuing to beaver away on Alpha 323, making some great headway there, but the introduction of creatures for the first time is what's going to get me very excited. Um, they should be so much fun. Hopefully they will behave as intended. Without the replication layer separation for the release of 323, though, if that is the case, it certainly seems that way, 
uh, it's likely they won't be behaving as intended. So we'll have some novelty with them, and then over time, hopefully, they can start acting appropriately. Hopefully, we will see more waves open up as well, but that was the latest update on Alpha 3.23. So just a quick heads up, I have partnered with Game Glass, which allows players to transform their tablets and phones essentially into a ship's dashboard, allowing you to immersively control many aspects of your ships and vehicles. And right now, until the 3rd of April, they are offering their lifetime pass again for the first time since their Kickstarter ended five years ago. Now, I know many of you use Game Glass for Star Citizen, as you have all told me on many occasions to get it, I do now have it and I am very excited to get using it and I highly suggest checking them out for yourselves if you haven't done so already. I have linked their website below. Now, if you do want to pick up the lifetime pass, using my code being SMB will get you 5% off that lifetime pass or any order on their Game Glass website. Plus it will provide me with a kickback directly supporting my channel. So thank you so much in advance if you do use it. And to the 50 of you who have already done so, thank you so much and I will be talking much more about Game Glass in upcoming videos and streams once I have set it all up. So this week's Inside Star Citizen was a look at the upcoming visor and lens hood rework, the new shopping UI, and the new quick loot screens. Starting with the lens and visor huds, with the difference between them being the visor is what is projected onto your helmet visor, which, as we know, will become more and more contextual to the type of helmet you're wearing from 323 onwards, but if you were to remove that helmet, any remaining hood elements will be projected via the lens, which is essentially a contact lens, giving you a smaller amount of information on your hood, like the player's vitals. And some things to bear in mind are that they are trying to get the UI in Star Citizen completely diegetic, meaning it is in the game world, presented in a realistic way, rather than just being on screen regardless. Plus, they are giving players reasons to wear various types of helmets, and hopefully even reasons to not wear a helmet. And what we will see when we are finally able to physically remove our helmets and hold them or hook them onto our hips will be a boot up and shut down sequence for that helmet, and each helmet display being different based on the role of the helmet and the manufacturer. Now for 323, it is just the new single visor hood, aside from the crosshair and hit markers being only applicable to combat helmets. But I also do suspect that we will see the ability to physically remove our helmets in 323. However, this isn't confirmed yet, so we will see. But over time, it will actually feel like you are putting a helmet on and wearing one. Now the helmet visor hood, as you can imagine, displays all the relevant information about the player's status, the weapons or tools you're holding, your notifications, your missions, your comms and so on. And as you can see, the UI icons change when switching from the lens to putting a helmet on, as essentially the manufacturer of each display is different, with the lens being made by Microtech. And as mentioned, over time, so not for 323, they will have different UI styles for each helmet manufacturer, with the context showing the different type of role for the helmet. Combat displaying combat specific information, medical helmets displaying medical information, mining for mining, and so on and so forth. Now for 323, they have cleaned up the HUD, organized and arranged the various information to be less in your face, and moved it more to the side of the HUD, rather than it being right in the middle as it is now. The new visor UI displays the new weapon UI information, as well as the new minimap, plus we got to see the new Mobiglass screen as well, which is looking very nice. Now, talking further about specific role visors, the work done here for 323, as mentioned, doesn't really bring in a huge amount of variation between the visors outside of this crosshair and hit markers, but it sets them up to allow this kind of work to roll out quicker, meaning we will start to see more role-specific helmets come along, offering pros and cons for each profession to aid you in that career choice. And this is gonna mean that collecting and choosing the right helmet for the right job will be important. And you can put together outfits for each profession, changing into them as and when you want to do something different, giving meaningful choice to what you are wearing and what you are taking with you. Now, moving on to the new loot screen, this UI gives you the ability to quickly and easily loot items that you need when the situation you are in doesn't allow time to thoroughly sift through. This is done in a much more streamlined way as well, as you just have to tap the F key when 
looking at a body, and it will bring up this quick loop screen so that you can grab ammunition, weapons, attachments, grenades, meds, and so on really quickly, especially helpful if you are in the heat of a battle. There is also an armor page that you can swap to so that you can basically swap out your armors quickly, and if you hover over a weapon, it will display all of the relevant ammo or attachments that fit that weapon, which is very handy, especially for new players. Now also in this menu, hovering over items will tell you the available actions, like a single click to equip it, or a shift click to store it, plus there is a button to allow you to switch between the quick loot screen and the current loot screen, which isn't going away, we will still have that as, as an option, but I think it is safe to say that the old inventory UI will be getting a visual update to look nicer and again be more user friendly, which will only be as and when the UI artists can get to it, it is certainly not finished by any means. Now it was also mentioned that what we are seeing here with the quick loot screen is the Squadron 42 version visually and it will change to be more Persistent Universe styled uh, with the release of 323. And then finally, the UI for the shopping experience has changed, and this is now by way of an AR projection, giving the impression that your contact lens is displaying the pop-up and gives you the information about what you are looking at while allowing you to buy it as well. So it does sound like you won't be able to physically interact with the item and instead just hit a keybind, although they did say that the quick buy option allows you to grab it quickly but I'm not sure if they meant there physically or if they just meant a quick buy that will then put it in your inventory or you'll suddenly just have it in your hands. Uh, but this new shopping UI certainly looks cleaner and very user-friendly, which is great, but I do personally prefer to be in charge of when UI pops up as I'd like to be able to see everything on display without the UI getting in the way all the time. But I will see how it feels when I get my hands on it in Alpha 323. So some great new updates there to make the overall experience smoother and cleaner, but ultimately it sets them up nicely to get all of the UI more polished and allows for a lot more diegetic UI while expanding the range of options that we have when choosing a helmet, like role specific and different manufacturer designs. And personally, as I keep saying, I really hope that I will be able to remove the lens or even swap out for different lenses for different roles so that I can potentially go completely UI free, as this allows you to fully appreciate the game world and all of the detail that they go to with every single asset they create. The UI is nice, of course, and very necessary, but I'd love the option to just take the lens off and see no UI outside of what is displayed on the screens, in-game, the weapons, and so on. Anyway, some much needed updates highlighted there, and I look forward to checking them out in-game in 323 and providing my feedback. But with that said, let us move on. So also this week, the Galactopedia was updated with information on the Tiber and Caliban systems. The Overdrive Initiative Mission 3 is now available. And finally, this is the last day to pick up the Toby Eye Tracker 5 at 15% off before it goes back to full price on the 1st of April. I highly recommend one. I use it daily with all of my videos and streams. Don't worry, there will be other sales throughout the year, which I will be sure to let you know about. Now, if you are planning to pick one up, using the link provided in the description does directly support the channel. So thank you so much if you do so, and a massive thank you to everyone who has done so already. So that brings us to the end of the show. If you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Also, I am able to do this thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members. If you appreciate what I do and would like to help make it even better from as little as $1 a month, all of the links are provided below.